In one of my recent videos about systemic racism, someone commented saying, statements like yours are the reason people are against critical race theory. Now, to be honest, I didn't actually know much about critical race theory. So I spent the next week only listening to proponents of critical race theory. And uh, it's pretty much bull Recently, I had a conversation about how easy it is to say you're for or against something by simply only listening to your perspective of news. If you're a liberal, you probably think CRT or critical race theory is the best thing since sliced bread. If you're conservative, the apocalypse. Now, while I would definitely consider myself moderate, I listen to slightly more conservative news than I do liberal news, probably at like a 55 to 60% tilt. That being said, a week of CNN, MSNBC, TYT, college video conferences, yeah. The first question is, what is CRT? And the problem is, no one really says the same thing. It appears everyone has their own tweak to it. Kind of like when you ask people, what is Black Lives Matter or what does it stand for? One thing they all agreed on though was that conservatives have an illogical fear of it and that their opinions or beliefs on it are generally wrong. So what you need to know is critical race theory can be taught in a sociological aspect or from a legal or law aspect. For purposes of this video, we're gonna to stick to the sociological. As explained by Glenn Bracey, a professor of sociology at Villanova University and advocate, there are six components to critical race theory. Race is a construct, race as a normal outcome, intersectionality, black and white binaries, racism is permanent, and commitment to narrative. Critical race theory teaches that race is a construct, or it has a social effect because people put weight on it. I mean, we have other constructs as well, government, identity, illness, technology, fine, it, it is what it is. Critical race theory teaches that our identities put us into different social locations, meaning perspectives and needs differ depending on our social location and that we can learn more by listening to other groups in these different um, social locations. I don't personally see anything wrong with this either. Of course, we can learn things from people of different cultures, social classes, ethnicities, no doubt. Mr. Bracey also threw in this nugget. He said, we have historically privileged the voice of the dominant group and that we need to privilege the voice of the less dominant group to get a whole picture of what the truth is. Now at face value, I agree with the statement. I just worry about the method that would be used to change the direction of privilege. Meaning, how are you going to reverse the process? So far, not too bad, huh? Not too bad. This is where we start getting into dicey territory. Critical race theory teaches that race is the normal outcome of society. Racism isn't just experiencing a racial slur. It's that our everyday lives in itself are shaped by racism and systemic racism every day, all day. Mr. Bracey gives the example that he wakes up every morning in a black neighborhood and that is because of systemic racism. It's funny because it's been used as a jab or a joke that liberals think everything is about race, but it's apparently true. Quick question though, if I chose cocoa pebbles over fruity pebbles for breakfast this morning, was that because of the racism that shaped me? Critical race theory teaches us that everything in life is organized so that white people are at the top and black people are at the bottom. This also applies to all other minorities and races as well, but racism affects them a little bit differently depending on the certain criteria or aspect of racism that we're talking about. I want you guys to tell me, is everything in our lives organized by white people on top and black people on the bottom? Critical race theory teaches us that white people are fixated with blackness and anti-blackness. That white people orient other races between white people and black people so that white people can keep their superiority. Mr. Bracey simplifies this by saying, racism is something white people can decide to give up if they change social institutions and their anti-blackness. He also states that CRT acknowledges change 
but recognizes the permanence in the choice. So I'll give it to you straight. If you were unwilling to change social institutions like government, economy, healthcare, education, religion, or family, you will remain, let me repeat that, you as in white people will remain racist. Lastly, CRT teaches the fundamental injustices we have in America are because we refuse to look at things in a racial lens, meaning everything needs to be looked at through a racial lens. Everything needs to be racialized. Those are the six components of CRT, but that's not where it stops. CRT also teaches that the state or government is not semi-autonomous. Critical race theory does not believe the government has interests of its own. I mean, sure, again, at face value, that's true. The government is made up of people, but CRT believes the government's interests are specifically that of white people. Critical race theory believes that the state is a tool specifically shaped, warped, and used as a weapon against the black people. Also, because the state is a white tool, that means black people can't be blamed for being unskilled or undisciplined. Because being unskilled or disciplined is a byproduct of the whiteness, the racism. We are not supposed to think of the government as a greedy entity in the business of doing the most good for the most people while trying to conserve individual liberties, but as an organization made of white people so as to manipulate and keep black people inferior. So is CRT Marxist? It's possible. Is CRT teaching students to hate America? Eh, not really. But is it a likely outcome? Yes. Does it teach that white people or whiteness is racist? Absolutely. Does it value group identity over individuals? Yes. Does it make black people out to be permanent victims? Most definitely. Does it make excuses for underachievement? Yes. Does it call for the overhaul of all American institutions? Yes. Is this something you should actually be afraid or concerned about being taught to your children? That's your call as a parent. I know people don't want to hear this, and I'm sure I'll be treated to the Uncle Tom phrase, but while America does have racists in it, America is not a racist country. America is the least racist country in the world. Does America have issues? Absolutely. And sometimes, depending on your upbringing, it might not be as easy for you to obtain something. But that doesn't mean you can't. It also doesn't mean someone held you back when you didn't obtain it. It is your responsibility as an individual to be the stepping block for the next generation in your family. Someone has to be the foundation, and that's the first step.